The compact disc, or CD, was introduced in the 1980s and it became very popular because it had excellent sound quality, it was very convenient, and it was much less fragile than its predecessors. So how does a CD actually work? Let's find out. So on a CD there is one single data track, and that track goes from the center of the disc to the outside. It's a spiral. Okay. Now, the laser that is going to read this data, this music or this video, is not going to follow that spiral. Instead, the disc is going to rotate. So there's a little motor in your CD player which is going to spin the disc around and then the laser is slowly going to move to the outside of the disc since it needs to follow that spiral. But now, how does it actually read the data? Well, a disc is constructed out of a couple of layers. The top layer is the logo, the label that is printed on the disc. Below that there is some acrylic, below that there is some aluminium where the data is actually stored, and below that there is some transparent plastic. Now the aluminium on the track of the disc is not completely flat, there are little bumps in it. Each bump represents a binary zero, and each area that is not a bump, so for example this area, represents a binary one. And of course a computer system can store any kind of data, whether it's music or video, encoded in zeros and ones. So that means we can store anything on this disk, as long as we encode it into zeros and ones. But now the question remains, how does the laser read it? How does the laser know how does the, the read mechanism know if there is a bump or not? Well, this is how it works. On the read head of your CD player, there is a laser and a sensor. And when the laser shines onto an area on the disc where there is no bump, so on the track of the disc and there is no bump, the laser beam is reflected into a sensor, which then generates an electric signal which is sent to a microprocessor. That microprocessor can then figure out, I just got an electric signal, this is a binary 1. If the laser does hit a bump, then the laser will reflect back like this, some, something like this. It won't go into the sensor. This means that the sensor will not generate an electric signal, so the microprocessor will not receive anything. So it will then assume this must be a binary zero. And that way the computer or the CD player can read the data of the disk. But that's not all of it. There is one final problem that needs to be solved in order to make a CD actually work. And to illustrate that, I drew two little black dots on the surface of this CD. Now, when I rotate it, as you can see, this dot is moving faster than this one. As you can see, it's moving at a much higher speed. So stuff that is near the edge of a disc is moving faster than stuff that is right near the center of the disc. This is a problem, because let's say that our laser starts reading the disc right here, but it's slowly moving towards the edge. We just discussed that. That means the data is flying by faster and faster. It's accelerating, which is not what we want. We want the data to fly above that laser at a constant speed. That is why CD players compensate for this. So as the laser moves towards the edge, the disk speed, the speed of his motor that is spinning the disk, is slowing down. So as the laser moves to the edge of the disk, it is decelerating. So that is how a CD works. Also, other optical discs, like DVDs and Blu-rays, work the same way, but with slight modifications. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.